Alec. Come here. Have you played Genesis before? Yeah. How, like, what's an easy way to get CP on here? To get CP? Like I hope this is not recording sound. It wouldn't be. There's only one spot on this entire map that has beaver dams. No, it is. I don't know exactly <laughs> where it's at, so you're probably just gonna have to look it up. Oh crap, I just went nine seconds because I got sidetracked. Thanks, Dwayne, for that great introduction. Now let me introduce myself. I'm powerless over drugs and alcohol, but today I choose recovery. My name is Tom. I'd like to start this story kind of in the middle, partly because I tend to do things backwards, but mostly because that is the lowest and yet the very beginning of my life. In the summer of 1983, I had just turned 30 years old and my life as such was over. I was physically, spiritually, morally, mentally bankrupt due to active alcoholism. I looked, smelled, acted, and thought like the chronic drunk that I was. My driving privileges were permanently revoked. I was unemployed and I was unemployable. I had been arrested many times for alcohol-related offenses. I weighed 120 pounds as opposed to the 150 I weigh now. I did not bathe regularly, and I was living as an unwanted guest in my soon-to-be ex-wife's apartment. Thinking back on it, when I was very young, I dreamed about what I wanted to be when I grew up. What I just described to you was not the picture I had in mind. And the staggering thing to me now is that I did not see any solutions, but I did not want any. What I did not know was that God was not yet done. So I'm going to fill in this backstory just a little so that you'll be able to see that this story is a testament to God's grace, mercy, forgiveness, patience, and love. I was born into a dysfunctional family. I didn't make them that way, not all of it anyway. Of course, I didn't help either, but anyway, I was born six weeks premature in 1953. I was the youngest child and the only boy. My mother was a rebellious daughter of a Methodist preacher. My father, I don't know a great deal about except that they were divorced and he was out of the picture by the time I was two. Because of mom's lifestyle choices, my two older sisters and I were raised pretty inconsistently. 
sometimes in church, sometimes not. Sometimes a sense of stability, mostly not. Sometimes a father figure around, again, mostly not. See, my mother's choice in companions was not very good. I really believe that mom did do the best she could with the tools she had. She loved us the best she could and worked incredibly hard to provide for us. It was during one of those times when we were at church that I experienced God for the first time. I was 10 or 11 years old and we were at a revival at my grandfather's church. I answered an altar call and experienced God's spirit in a way that was so real that I remember it to this day. And for the next year or so, I tried to stay connected to the church and to find out what this Christian thing was and what it was I had experienced and what I was supposed to do. But I did drift away after a while. Mom fell in love again, and we moved from a small town in southwest Missouri to Bergen County, New Jersey, just outside Manhattan. Talk about culture shock. I was an immature 13-year-old boy, already showing some problems and didn't handle any of it well. I was sure that I did not fit in, and I didn't, and that I was homely, and that I talked funny, and that I didn't belong there or anywhere else for that matter. I was becoming empty and lost, and I started trying to fill the void with anything I could, could to fill the emptiness, mainly glue sniffing, then booze, then girls, and I started what was a long run of bad choices and bad responses to the consequence of those choices. And this continued on for years, including from moving from place to place in what AA calls the geographical cures, job losses, trips to jail on many occasions, car wrecks, DUIs, and insanity, until just before my 31st birthday, I found myself a hopeless, helpless, useless alcoholic, living as a boarder in my soon-to-be ex-wife's apartment in Pine Manor, Fort Myers, Florida. With a three-year-old daughter that I couldn't be a father to, and throughout this time I had gone to counselors, I had gone to churches, psychiatrists, I was seeking help but not willing to face the fact that the problem was me. I read in my file at a detox I worked at after I'd been sober a little while, and the last entry said in bold letters, this client doesn't want to change. I did not want help, I didn't want hope, I didn't want to get sober, I didn't want God, and I sure didn't want Jesus. I wanted my life to end, and it's all I prayed for. And you know what? God did. Through a detox that I had already been in twice before, then the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, which I had also been to before, my life, life began to a transformation that continues to this day. In AA, I was given the gift of hope for a sober life that I had long since given up any hope of ever having or even wanted. I started learning about living sober and that I had to trust the power greater than myself for sobriety, and that I needed to be of service, and I had to face who I really was and be willing to change. Because I was given the gift of sobriety, I got involved in AA. I made a decision to turn my life I didn't really know much about over to a God I did not understand. And I worked through the steps for the first time with my sponsor, to the best of my ability, and I continued to study and to work the steps by talking with my sponsor, going to step meetings, and sponsoring other people. And then I met a lovely lady from Al-Anon named Barbara. We dated, lived together, then started going to a little church, and we got involved there. And we got married in a Christian ceremony. That didn't go so well with her Jewish mother, but anyway. And we were busy building our sober, happy life together trying to live sober, trying to figure out what it meant to be a Christian, not really sure if a Christian is what I wanted to be. I was trying to be a husband, father, and stepfather, and trying to go up, grow up all at the same time. But I was fighting a personal relationship with Christ, and I found that in a real way, my biggest problem, after all, was simply living life as a mature, reasonably healthy adult male. Now, throughout life, sex was an issue. 
My relationships with women were always strongly based in sex and always codependent. Consequently, I was in a lot of relationships but knew very little about love. There was also a problem with pornography, either in print or film, and then later in the internet. We did, we'd been married about eight years when she started developing strange symptoms that ultimately was diagnosed as a neurological disease similar to Lou Gehrig's disease. And over the next 18 months, she deteriorated physically until April 17, 1997, Barbara passed away. My wife was gone, my happy sober dreams were gone, and what faith I had left seemed to be gone. Pornography had been a problem in our marriage, and even though in a technical sense I was faithful, I did fail completely in the last few weeks of her life. And I was left with the grief, the guilt, bills I couldn't manage, a growing sexual addiction, and I went along like that for about two years. I do have to stop here and say that the church we were attending were great. The folks in AA were great. But I was still trying to do things by my own strength. I knew that if I just did the right things, I would be okay. You see, I never lost the hope that I had been given. I did work through the steps again with a counselor, which provides some relief from the grief, but I wasn't as totally honest with her as I should have been especially about the six sex issues. So after a couple of years, another lovely lady came along and I handled that relationship with the same relational skills I had always used in the past, which led very quickly to a failed marriage because of an adulterous relationship on my part. That left me turning 49 years old and starting over again. I didn't want to drink, and I didn't. But I wasn't flourishing either. I was going to meetings, I was working my program, I was working, going to church periodically. I was struggling, struggling spiritually and socially. So I came up with a plan. I sold the house that I lived in for about 16 years or so, paid off the debts, bought a mobile home in a park, and I bought my first Harley Davidson, and I got a dog, Libby. And my plan was to work my job, go to meetings, go to church, now and then, ride my motorcycle, take care of my dog, stay sober, and that was about as far as my plan went. I had truly wrapped myself up into a very small, self-absorbed package. The mobile home I had bought from my sponsor, and the one thing he left in it was a little sign on the bathroom mirror that said, you are looking at the problem. But remember I've said, God has other ideas. First, I ran into Bill R. at an AA meeting, and he told me about this thing called Celebrate Recovery. And they said they had a group that might be able to help with the sex issue. I'm not sure how long it was, but I actually showed up on Friday night and started attending the Men's Sexual Integrity Group. I also started working through the steps again with a sponsor dealing with the sex and codependency issues. It was about this time that I got together with another group of guys with different recovery times and issues, and we took several months and worked through the steps again. Now, it was because of my dog, Libby, that I encountered Bonnie in 2004. She was walking her dog, Gizmo, who was not too sure of Libby or me, but we said hi and we started to chat over time. And after a while, my dog realized that if she made her way to Bonnie's place, she always got treats, and so it began. Bonnie told me later on that she didn't actually bribe my dog, but she didn't discourage it either. We began dating in January 2005, and to be honest, it started like all the other relationships I'd ever had. But because of what we were learning here at CR, we put the relationship on a healthier, more biblical basis. We reaffirmed our baptisms on the same night in April of that year, and we made our walks to Emmaus in September and were married October 1st, 2005. I kid Bonnie by telling her our marriage has reached a new milestone. It has surpassed my dog Libby as the longest continuing relationship in my life. We have continued to share in life and in recovery. 
We each work our own program, but we do share in service and the Choose Recovery Ministry. And I am actively involved in my AA home group. And one of the things that has really stuck with me is what I heard in recovery practically since day one. It is this summary of what we need to do to participate with God's grace in recovery. In AA, I heard people say that to stay sober, I needed to trust God, work the steps, get a sponsor, go to meetings, and get involved in service work. I heard so often I think I was hearing it in my sleep, but it worked. So when I finally accepted Jesus Christ, instead of debating with him, I started working the program with him as a center, and that makes sense to me. As Choose Recovery, we made the wise decision to place those five essentials at the core of how we approach recovery. The only difference is, is that we have identified our source of all things as being God through his son, Jesus Christ. So now I'm, I'm growing in my trust in Jesus Christ, and I continue to work the steps with my sponsor. I continue to enjoy meetings regularly, even the Zoom meetings, and I continue to try to be of service and actively involved with Choose Recovery and my AA home group. I continue to experience things I would never have thought possible at another time in my life. There's a sense of stability, and even in these uncertain times. I have the joy of a growing marriage with Bonnie as we partner in life and recovery. I have the freedom to live each day and take it as it comes and to find happiness in the great things and the seemingly small things that God is doing in my life and the endless amazing things God is doing in this world that we live in. Each day I truly experience God's grace and mercies new, and I am convinced that I can continue to live this amazing life in recovery and service as long as I keep doing the five simple things we just outlined. May God bless you, and thank you for allowing me to share this story. Done.